Happy New Year, and welcome to another episode of Problem Solved. I'm James Swisher, IISE Director of Continuing Education. In this episode, we discuss the 2023 IISE University Regional Conferences with representatives from three different events. We begin with Taya Allen, Student Conference Chair for the U.S. Southeast event set for March 22nd through the 24th at the University of Central Florida in Orlando. You can find a full schedule with links to individual conference pages at IISE.org slash regional conferences. Thank you, Taya Allen, so much for being with us this morning. We're really excited about the upcoming Southeast uh, Regional Conference at UCF. Uh, I'd love to know a little bit about, you know, how did you get involved in industrial and systems engineering and what's your role in the ISE chapter at UCF? Of course. So I'd say that industrial engineering kind of runs in the family. My mom graduated from UCF with her IE degree oh, wow. and right in the thick of COVID in May 2020. <laughs> So even before I declared my major as industrial engineering back in 2018, when I started at UCF, I was very much so introduced to industrial engineering very heavily because I'd always go with my mom to class because it was like night classes and I wasn't doing anything anyways. So definitely that's how I kind of got my start in it. And then of course, actually being in the major and also having professional experience just kind of solidified, okay, yeah, this is definitely something that I want to do the optimization of processes and just helping companies be as successful as they possibly can be, but as efficiently as possible, just something that's always been kind of interesting to me. And then how did I get involved with the conference? I've been on the board of directors for my university's chapter for IISC for the last two years now. Last year, I was the conference director. So my primary role was facilitating students that want to go to conferences like the SWE conference or the SHIP conference or the NSBE conference and, you know, running the numbers, seeing exactly how much every student must pay in order to go, facilitating their lodging and transportation, and then just making sure that they actually get there in one piece. And then that role was kind of grandfathered me into this current role, which is conference chair, where I pretty much just plan this conference from start to finish. Wow. That is amazing. It sounds like you are a busy person. Kind of. I mean, <laughs> you, you make time for the things that you very much so are passionate about. So have you been able to to go to one of the regional conferences in the past or would this be your mm-hmm. first one? This will be my first one, oh, wow. which is kind of crazy to think that I'm planning it and I've never actually seen it before. <laughs> but I'm a conference fanatic. I've been going to conferences ever since my freshman year. Which, so I, I think I have an idea as to what be there. Of course, I have a great support system, not only the national organization, but also people that have been to conferences before. I've spoken to you in great detail about them. So I think I have a vision and hopefully it goes through. Well, it sounds like you definitely have a vision. Yeah. What, what are you what are you hoping that folks are going to get out of the conference? What's your goal? Definitely just increasing their personal and professional development. Yeah. I'm mirroring the program elements of my conference to those that are featured primarily at the SWE conference, which I've been to four times now. So definitely we're going to have breakout sessions. Definitely we're going to have competitions that really test the rigor of someone's academic um, coursework through technical paper competitions. Of course, we're just going to have keynotes where people are going to be able to hear and learn from professionals already in the thick of it in their career. So definitely increasing their personal development as well as their professional development is the end goal. That's really awesome. And you mentioned SWE. We're always delighted to partner with SWE. Um, so, so many talented uh, women in engineering today. Are you hoping to have any special programs targeted at those who are um, both IISE and SWE members? So we're definitely on our application saying, OK, well, are you a part of any other organizations? Like sure. if you're a joint membership, similar to how SWE kind of asked if you're a part of IISC or if you're a part of SHIP or NSBE. So definitely if students do select that option, we'll make sure they get a little something, something like a ribbon that says joint membership. So, so, you know, the people know, and it's a great conversation starter too. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you've, you've really been thinking through a lot of the logistics and planning. And I know, you know, the um, not surprised that you haven't had a chance to attend in the past because the last two years have been a little 
different in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot <laughs> a of, <little. laughs> a lot of life events uh, were live stream or didn't happen at all. So um, how about for you, the, you know, the last two years, how's the pandemic shaped your experience on campus and your experience at UCF? So I kind of think that COVID was a little bit of a blessing prior to COVID. I'll be completely frank. I wasn't really the most social person. I didn't really <laughs> talk to people in class. I find really that hard events. to believe. <laughs> I, I tell, when people say that, they're like, no. And I'm like, no, seriously. But definitely because of COVID, I've actually met a lot of my really good friends who we all ended up being heavily involved with IASC because all of their events got moved to online. So we were actually able to go to them at this point. So definitely... I for sure become way more social. I actually have more friends in class now, or at least friends. <laughs> so <laughs> that's definitely cool. Of course, it took everyone by surprise because, you know, I left for spring break and never went back. Wow. But I mean, definitely it's shaped, especially my experience now, now that I'm in my fifth year at UCF, coming back from COVID again, now I have people to look out for when I'm in class. I have events to look forward to. And now I have this super amazing club that, I would have never been a part of had it not been for COVID. Oh, wow. Well, that's, that's a good silver lining on that, <laughs> on that mm -hmm. great cloud. <laughs> Did you guys take some of the learnings from COVID and as part of your planning in terms of safety precautions or other things for the conference? Oh, definitely. I, even before COVID, I guess I'm a self-proclaimed germaphobe. I always <laughs> stood six feet apart from people. I literally walk with hand sanitizer in my bag all the time. Yousef is also very big on just making sure that we have a whole lot of hand sanitizing stations throughout the entire campus. And I chose a location that also has plenty of hand sanitizer stations, as well as allows for people to social distance if they would like to. Well, it sounds like you've um, you you have put on your IE cap uh, as you've been planning this conference. So not only from a, a process perspective, <laughs> but from a safety perspective as well. So that's that's really awesome. Are there kind of other IE tools you've used in planning the process? You know, how, how have you used your <laughs> industrial and systems engineering skill set as you're thinking about the conference? So, I mean, you kind of already alluded to it, but definitely in terms of process improvement. So as I mentioned, I've been to many conferences in the past, so I've seen what works and what doesn't work. So that definitely has kind of trickled into my planning here. So especially like when it comes to where there's lines forming, where can we allocate those lines? How can we mitigate the space that we're using so that they form in a more cohesive manner so that they're not bleeding into other things that are happening and other traffic happening. Also in terms of like lunches for example because of course we got to feed the people if they're here <laughs> Absolutely. we can't have them in a hallway because the hallway's not enough space but we can't have it too far away from the event space because people may get lost or maybe too far of a walk so looking at other options that are somewhat feasible and will work for everyone too and also take into consideration everyone's capabilities as well as abilities so making sure that event spaces have ramps so that people can get in should they have wheelchairs and stuff like that. That's really great. It's really great to make sure that um, we're able to accommodate everyone who wants to attend. So I'm glad, mm -hmm. you're, glad you're thinking of that. Glad that you're thinking through <laughs> how to optimize those cues and how to keep people safe. Uh, it sounds like mm -hmm. it's going to be a great event. I know one of the things that that I always enjoy about uh, live events is the networking. Have you, uh, have you do you have any plans for networking or you know, what are you excited about from a networking perspective? Oh, of course I have plans for from a networking <laughs> perspective. So in, in replacement of a traditional career fair, because usually by like March or April, students probably have their offers for where they're going to be going that upcoming summer in terms of internships or even full time roles. We're having an industry mixer where companies and representatives from those companies are still going to have booths. They'll still be stations. Students can still come up to them and ask them any questions about what it is that their company offers and entails or has in terms of internships, co-ops, and full-time roles. And it's kind of very much so of, it's centered more on networking as opposed to recruiting. Now, if someone just happens to also be like, hey, we want to sit you down for an interview for a future role, power to them definitely going to enforce it but i totally understand that again it's kind of at a interesting time in the year so again as opposed to a career fair we're having an industry mixer i like that that's a great idea it should be a lot of fun for everybody mm -hmm. And I know the iems department at ucf is a big department a really uh 
diverse and talented department. Um, lots of movers and shakers, lots of interesting things going on there. What do you want to show off to everybody, whether at UCF? Definitely just how integrated engineering and specifically industrial engineering is to, to campus and on campus. So just our engineering building alone has so many different pieces from Boeing, L3 Harris, Texas Instruments, Disney, showing just the interconnectedness of organizations in the surrounding Central Florida region and how UCF plays a role in their success. So definitely want to show off just how many organizations have poured into UCF and how many organizations have benefited from UCF graduates. Wow. That, I'm excited. I want to come. <laughs> come. The more the merrier. <laughs> well, thinking of that, tell you, it, anybody who's on the fence trying to decide about whether they should come or not, what would you tell them? If you're on the fence, just do it. I can't tell people. <laughs> un- like, I, I vouch for conferences all the time. I always say that some, all my experiences that I've ever had have been granted to me because of conferences and because of the networking opportunities that they offer and just how much I've learned in terms of personal branding, marketing, how I could make myself the most profitable candidate. You can get so much out of a conference and you may not even realize it in the moment, but when you're thinking back on it, you're like, dang, I, I really did so much. And I have so much under my belt now that I can use in upcoming experiences. So definitely if you're on the fence, just do it. <laughs> it's going to benefit you. It definitely will. I love that. That's a great advice. And I bet that goes not just for students who might be on the fence, but for professional members who might be on the fence too. Like I, the more the merrier, right? Absolutely. Everyone, like I said, can get something out of this conference, whether it's meeting another professional at the industry mixer or just hearing from different organizations, what a day in their life is someone in Pretty much anyone can get at least one thing out of this event. Awesome. Now, remind us um, the when and where, just so everybody knows. Yes. So location, University of Central Florida. Date is March 2023. Awesome. I think it's going to be a great event. And it's certainly uh, we we have a great person leading this event. (laughs) I think you're doing a great job, Taya. And it's just a delight to talk to you. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we wrap up? Um, Yeah, if y'all are interested in attending conference, want to stay in the loop about everything and anything, 2023 Southeast Regional Conference, definitely check out our website periodically. It is IISE2023CIRC.SquareSite. So check it out. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Taya. This has been really great. I'm really excited about the conference and you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. Next, we talk to organizers of the U.S. Great Lakes Conference, Student Chair Sammy Malone and Nate Brolman, and Faculty Chair Sandy Froederer. These Buckeyes share some of their plans for the event, taking place February 17th through the 18th at The Ohio State University. My name is Nate Rollman. Um, I guess I'm a third year here at The Ohio State University, obviously an industrial systems engineering major. I'm one of the uh, co-coordinators for the conference this year. Hi, I'm Sammy Malone. I am the other coordinator for the conference, and I am a fifth year ISC student here at Ohio State. Hi, I'm Dr. Sandy Furterer, and I'm a professor of practice in the Integrated Systems Engineering Department at Ohio State, and I'm actually an alumni of our department. And I'm also a very long time uh, IISE member. I'm a senior member and I am also on the SEMS board. I'm a president or yeah, president elect on the SEMS board. So. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Ferner. And thank you for all that you've done to promote industrial systems engineering in your career. And that must be pretty cool to be back at your old school. It is. I'm actually one office uh, away from where I was a graduate teaching assistant. So it's pretty wow. cool. Wow. That's really, really neat. <laughs> well, what's it been like, Sandy, working with, with Nate and Sammy to plan the regional conference? Oh, it's been fantastic. So I'm a, a new faculty advisor for the IISC student chapter. I just started back with Ohio State um, in July. So um, I, I'm really happy to be able to be working with them. They're amazing students, as all our students are, of course. And um, and my kind of philosophy on 
on working with the students is just to kind of get out of the way um, and let them do their thing because they are already amazing. They had an artificial intelligence conference last year, which was really cool. And, you know, so I, I you know, I'll support them. I, I, you know, we meet every couple of weeks and, but they're really doing the heavy lifting. So it, it makes my life really easy, but it's really awesome for them to have the opportunity to put something of this magnitude together for, for the department, for, for the society as well. Oh yeah. And it's a great opportunity for, to show off what's going on at Ohio state and, and for the students to <laughs> brag a little bit. Yes. And Sammy, Nate, how's, how's the process been for you? What's it been like planning this conference? You know, tell us a little bit about your, your roles in the conference. It's been a great experience. So we started back, uh, we were, I guess, just kind of volunteered for it last February. Um, they sent out like a, a memo at one of the general body meetings. Um, and so it's been it's been a really good experience so far. Uh, we've been working with a, a committee of 12 other students um, besides ourselves, but which it would have been, I think, impossible if it was just us. So it's been good to have them. Uh, and we've we kind of met a couple of times over the summer, but we really kicked it into gear here at the beginning of this semester. Um, and we've just been, you know, chugging along, uh, reaching out to people, trying to make connections, trying to leverage the resources that um, the other students have. Uh, at at the university and everything, um, trying to make it as best as we can. That's awesome. How about for you, Sammy? Similar experience? Yes, very similar. Our committee um, has been doing fantastic work. They've been a pleasure to work with. And it's been really interesting being able to kind of explore the different industry around Columbus and all of the different opportunities that OSU has when trying to figure out what exactly to plan for the conference. It's really great that you guys have a you know a large committee that's supporting you as well. I mean that's fantastic. Did you did you model that after um, you know another another regional conference or did you guys you know, get together and say this is what we need <laughs> and, and and put it together on your own? Uh, well, it's definitely what we need. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, we were kind of modeling it after the. I think we. Ohio State held the last regional conference in 2018. Um, and now nobody who is currently un an undergrad here um, in our club was around for that. Uh, so we kind of used some of the uh, like some of the seniors, some of the upperclassmen to get in contact with the alumni who organized that. Um, and so we were able to get a lot of resources on what they did when they planned that conference back in 2018. Uh, and so we, you know, then their files were a little messy, but we were able to like dig through everything and kind of um, gain a little bit of a structure from that. Uh, so that's kind of where we we're basing it off. Yeah. That's smart. I like, like true IEs. You uh, look for the documented best practice, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> look for the standard work. <laughs> <laughs> were there, were there other industrial engineering tools that, that you guys have applied in, in preparing for the conference so far? I can kind of jump in on that from oh, what yeah. I've seen from kind of the big picture. Um, definitely the kind of the systems thinking, how how the whole picture, how the whole conference is going to fit together. What's the kind of the mission or the the vision of the conference? Um, I think they've done that. What do we want that to be? We've had lots of conversations around that. They've had lots of conversations engaging students as well, which I think is really important. That whole voice of customer, voice of the students. What do you guys want to see? What kind of industry? industry partners do you want to hear from? So I think that's been really important. And I think kind of the, the systems engineering view of how it all fits together. And then also some good project management tools as well. You know, how are we going to plan? How are we going to execute? What's our timeline? What's our program going to look like, of course, as well. So I think they've been doing a fantastic job from that perspective. I just wanted to add one one more thing on when you when you asked about kind of how they started planning the conference and how they decided to engage a large group of, of students. Yeah. Um, th this has actually kind of been the way that that most of the clubs at Ohio State operate. It's, you know, a lot of of a lot of organizations will ha have your four officers, you know, or so, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll have your four officers or so. And, you know, that's kind of who gets it gets to put it on their resume and 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 who does most of the work. But the philosophy at Ohio State with most of the clubs that I've seen, because I've been involved in other student chapters for other societies as well, is to try to engage as many people as possible. Whoever wants to be involved, they can have some type of leadership role, whatever it is, whether it's marketing, whether it's communication, whether it's 
it's being the president leading, doing the conferences or whatever. So I think that's really important. They've got lots of different opportunities and clubs at Ohio State. And this one is a great example. The students have been engaged from day one. This is, you know, Columbus is the first IISE chapter. And I think it's great that our students have have really kept the momentum going and really looking forward to these being the future professionals in, in the society and in our profession. That's really great, Dr. Furter. And, and also, I think a real testament to how work gets done uh, outside of the academic setting as well. You know, very, very little happens with uh, a single genius. <laughs> Most yeah. things seem to happen with a good team. So Absolutely. it's great that uh, great that, the, that Ohio State provides those opportunities and that that's the culture there. It's a real testament to the school. Thank you. Uh, and, and to the wonderful education that that uh, everybody receives there. So we know we know we're going to have some smart IEs coming coming out from uh, Ohio State and a bunch of smart IEs visiting as well. Can you guys maybe give us a little sneak preview of some of the things that you're you're going to highlight in the program? One of the things that we want to highlight is, um, you know, not only just the industry around Columbus, but also the uh, research opportunities and the really um, interesting research going on at Ohio State. Uh, we're still working out the details of what exactly uh, that will be, but we have some really great research institutions, um, research labs here. <laughs> And so we want to highlight um, one or more of them and give people um, a tour of those facilities so they really get to see what exactly goes on. Um, and they're able to you know, ask questions and engage with uh, what we do here. That would be really great, Sammy. I know it would be great to show off a little. You've got a lot of great labs and facilities to show off. And you mentioned a word that I think is probably pretty important. And, and you tell me, you mentioned engage. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it's been a couple of years with COVID. Um, we we haven't had as many opportunities to engage in person. How important do you think it is to have a, a live in person event like this and be able to engage one another <laughs> in person instead of via Zoom? I would say it's pretty important. You're able to make um, a lot more connections. And that's one of the things that we wanted to focus on um, for the conference is giving people plenty of opportunity to connect with the other students, as well as um, people that are going to be coming as speakers, um, as sponsors. And so we have multiple events set up throughout the conference. Um, on Friday, we have a lot of time set out to allow people to get to know one another. Um, and then on Saturday, we have you know, the pack day full of activities. Um, there's competitions um, and just different opportunities, networking sessions where people are able to make those personal connections. That's awesome. And Dr. Furterer, for you, I mean, do you see a, a value or maybe a little different perspective on the value of in, of in person from your perspective as a faculty advisor? Sure. I, I think they have the right perspective. And I would just kind of add the importance of it is I've got some of kind of my longest term colleagues and friends in the profession that I've met through different um, societies, through IISE in particular, and the conferences that I've been engaged to on. And it's nice to kind of go to the conference year after year and see see our, the same colleagues and kind of connect and, and, you know, kind of get up to date on, you know, their families and and what they've been doing and it's it's you don't think when i think you're in in um when you're an undergrad that you really think you're going to have lifelong friends from this networking opportunity. But I really think you do. And I think that's a, an added great benefit is, you know, a lot of times our lives are so busy that that we forget to stop and have friends sometimes and and do things outside of work, especially professors. I know that's true. <laughs> and, and and so I think it's really important to have those networks to support you in, in life and 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 to have friends from it. You you might not think they actually become your friends, but they really do. There's a couple of my colleagues and I, we just seem to go from conference to conference. And, <laughs> and we just came back from Abu Dhabi at a conference. It was really so much fun. So it's just, it, it just really adds to life. So that's a great point. And you're right. I can think back, you know, um, gosh, I guess it'll be 30 years since I joined as an undergraduate. Um, but yeah, I've got lifelong friends that I met through IISE. So um, that's that definitely is an important part of this as well. There's the the learning and the and the um, opportunity to network, but there's also the opportunity to to build and strengthen those friendships. Well, we talked a little bit about um, you know, the in-person nature of this. 
How about when we think through like safety precautions, right? I know that you guys have probably done a lot of thinking and, and planning around how we're going to keep people safe at the event. Um, Nate or Sammy, you want to speak to that? Sure. Yeah. We just talked about this before and, and, you know, kind of what, what do we say? I mean, we're not like official, you know, people that have been involved in COVID protocols, but, um, but I just read something that was kind of interesting that Ohio state had over a million COVID tests administered during the pandemic. Um, they were the students, I think they were almost weekly tests for a while. And, um, and, and I'm sure if the faculty and staff as well. And they were very proud to say that there were no known campus transmissions. So, wow. I, yeah, so that was pretty powerful. And so I, we're just assuming that we're going to continue any types of safety protocols that would be in place at the time. So I, I'm not really worried about that at all. The so. data shows that you have an effective system. So don't yes. <laughs> <laughs> an effective and stable process. We're not going to mess with it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I asked Nate, Sammy, uh, when we started our conversation, I, I probably skipped an important question, which is tell us a little bit about how you got interested in industrial engineering in the first place. What brought you to what brought you to this great uh, uh, opportunity uh, to, to be part of IISE and, and to be an industrial engineer? When I was applying um, for colleges, I actually came in freshman year as an industrial systems engineering major here, which for a lot of people um, isn't how they make their way over. A lot of people transfer from like mechanical and stuff. But I remember sitting on the couch uh, looking at like college applications with my mom um, and we were kind of going through. I knew I wanted to do engineering. Um, and she's like, how about this one? Uh, we're just like at the Ohio State page. It's uh, like industrial and systems engineering. And she kind of read me the description. I was like, yeah, that sounds good. Um, and so I picked it and then um, I came and started taking classes um, and I've really fallen in love with it. Um, originally, what attracted me, it's more like people based, obviously. Um, I feel like part of the things that was something I was worried about um, with other engineering majors is you kind of get um, into the technical aspects and then you get like put into a back corner and like an office by yourself. But uh, I think this really brings the opportunity to work with a lot of people. Um, when you're problem solving, which is, which is something I really thrive on. Um, and so, yeah, I, I've just been taking classes and uh, I got more involved with IISE. Uh, our student chapters is, was really strong and really welcoming. Um, and so that led me here. That's awesome, Nate. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you picked it and uh, glad glad that it's been a good experience for you. Sammy, how about you? How did you come to industrial systems engineering? I was one of the people who started as mechanical engineering and then it switched over to ISC. <laughs> um, I knew I wanted to do engineering going into college and I didn't really know anything more than that. And I picked mechanical because it seemed to be the most broad. And it was also one that I've heard about because um, I had not heard about ISC until coming here. Um, and I was in an ISC class and it was that time of my like academic career when I was starting to like look ahead, plan what classes I was looking at. And I did not want to take like 90% of the mechanical engineering classes. I just <laughs> didn't have any interest in it. I was like, <laughs> you, I don't really have any passion for this. Mechanics um, of deformable bodies wasn't uh, high on your list of. <laughs> no, it didn't make the cut. <laughs> um, and looking at the ISC class list, I was a lot more excited about those classes. And then some of the mechanical classes that I was interested in, I could also take as an ISC. So I was like, oh, no reason to stay in mechanical. Um, and I've really enjoyed being in ISC. It was definitely the right decision. I found a lot of passion in my classes. Um, and you know, my mom has to like sometimes tell me, like, okay, like you can stop talking about like whatever random <laughs> tangent that I'll go on because she's um just kind of sitting there and she can't, you know, she's my mom, she's stuck with me. Um, and so <laughs> I've been really lucky to find you know, this major and something that, you know, I really have a lot of passion for. That's awesome. It's an awesome story. And sounds like, sounds like not only were you lucky, but the major was lucky that, that you found it. So that's awesome. Uh, well, you guys are an impressive team. Is there, uh, are there any final thoughts that you'd like to give to our listeners out there about uh, why they should come join the conference, whether they're a student or whether they're a professional member why should they come join you and, and give us a where and when as well, just to remind everybody. 
I'll, I'll jump in real quick. Um, I, I just think it's going to be a great opportunity because it's been student led and it's really defining um, what our next ge next generation of IEs, um, where they want to go and 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 what they want to be a part of. So I think that'll be great. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of great industry speakers and presenters. Um, you're going to be able to see a lot of the wonderful labs, um, research labs, and you'll get to interact with a lot of the professors at Ohio State as well. And again, it, it's going to be mostly the students, I think, that, you know, network with working with them and just seeing kind of the ha having faith in the future is fantastic. You know, a lot of times, you know, people will rag on the young, younger generation. I think they're amazing. There's so much, you know, there's so much on, more on the ball than I ever was. I, I never thought about the things that they've already uh, thought of and really even done to be engaged so much in in internship opportunities and and projects with industry and all those kind of things, they're bringing so much to to the, their future jobs. It's just really exciting. So you'll get to see a lot of our students, uh, you know, in action. So I think that's really exciting. That's awesome. That's a great opportunity. And I'll, I'll shout out the the where and when, like you said, uh, February seventeenth and eighteenth. That's a Friday and Saturday uh, here at the Ohio State University, um, of course. So we're going to be hosting at the Fawcett Center, which is a, a facility just north of campus. Um, so it'll be a really great opportunity to come and see the campus if you've never been here. Um, and then, as far as the the content of the conference, I was able to go to my first um, in person conference with the annual ISC annual conference and uh, and. Uh, in Seattle um, last May. Um, and it was just a really just fun experience, regardless of like going to the sessions, just being in that environment um, is just really exciting. And we're able to meet some of the other um, people from our region too. And so I'm going to, I mean, encourage them to, to come and everything and uh, hopefully like make those, remake those connections this year. That's awesome, Nate. Sammy, you want to give us a final pitch? Um, just that, you know, you never really know like what you're going to get out of something until you're there. And I think um, when you have a gathering of this many, um, you know, smart, interested, curious individuals, you're really going to get a lot out of it. Um, you're going to get a lot more than what you expect. I think that's exactly right, Sammy. What a great what a great way to <laughs> close this session. And um, my gosh, I, I can't agree with Dr. Furter more that um I'm so impressed by the two of you and the work that you've done on this. And you're definitely 10 times smarter than I ever was uh, at at your age and probably still um, twice as smart as I'll ever be. So oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you both so much for your hard work on this. Uh, it's going to be an amazing event. And, and really, I think it's going to there's going to be something for everyone, whether you're a professional looking for new talent <laughs> in your organization or you're just interested in what's going on at Ohio State or if you're a student looking to meet other students and, and learn what you want to do next. This is going to be a really, really great event. So thank you so much, Dr. Furter. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Sammy. This has been an awesome opportunity to, to learn more about the upcoming regional conference. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Finally, we talked to Michael Foss, a consultant and speaker at the IISE North Central Regional Conference, February 17th through the 18th in Rapid City, South Dakota. Foss is a past president of IISC who has attended these events for a number of years and always welcomes the chance to interact with future ISEs. Michael Foss, thanks for joining us on the podcast today. How are you? I'm great, James. Thanks for inviting me. It's great to be here. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Glad to hear it. I hear that you're also excited about attending the IISE North Central Regional Conference in Rapid City, South Dakota. Yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, these conferences are amazing uh, and I get as much enjoyment and benefit out of them as the students do, or if not even more. Uh, and the the team that's putting on that conference reached out and we had a good conversation and and uh, super excited to participate in their event this uh, next year. Sounds awesome. Now, is this your first time attending a regional conference or have you are you a long time regional conference attendee? I, well, it depends on how you define long time. But it's about, <laughs> about 15 years. The older we get, the shorter uh, yeah. long time seems to be. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've been, been uh, fortunate to attend several. Um, across the U.S. and even in Canada, 
uh, over the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. So just really enjoy it. Oh, wow. That sounds exciting. What's your favorite part? And interacting with the students um, yeah. and having the opportunity to influence them to see things a little differently in their own life uh, and consider possibility and, you know, to, to push the limits. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of the belief that your expectations set the ceiling for your results and human humans in na the natural form will settle for an expectation that is far less than they're actually capable of achieving. Right. Um, and so, you know, I feel like it's my mission and my calling to, you know, introduce the idea of possibility and, and that every one of us is created for greatness in our own way. Uh, and uh, just love, you know, challenging students and, and encouraging them to see some things differently and giving them some inspiration to, to go further than they thought even possible. That's really cool. And I, I know yeah. students really benefit from that. How about, how about the opposite direction? Do you, do you learn something from the students too while you're there? Yeah, absolutely. You know, 2022, I was in Oklahoma city um, and they had a pretty severe snow event. They were expecting 150 students and almost all of them came anyway. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, so it was phenomenal. And, you know, just, you know, the questions they ask and the, the preparedness that they do and the, you know, how these, all these events are really largely put on by the students. Yeah. Uh, so the events, the coordination, the agenda, you know, it's all amazing uh, how they step up and really perform and really create something significant for the students to come away with real value added information and experience. Yeah. I, you know, I think you talked about uh, people showing up live in person and, you know, after two years of, <laughs> of COVID sort of influencing our live events, it's really nice to see all of these regional conferences be back live in person. What, what do you think the value is, or can you, can you even describe the value of being able to network live in person? Yeah, it's a great question, James. And, you know, that's that question came large to all of us um, in 2020 was how quickly could you shift to a virtual environment if you weren't there already? Um, and how can you make it sustainable and successful? And and I think companies and universities pivoted pretty well, uh, considering the constraints and the environment and the need to, to do something different. Yeah. Um, but as I evaluated it as a leader supporting organizations and, and student volunteer groups as well, um, there's there's absolutely no replacement for the on site in person experience. Yeah. Um, during 2020, I was leading a, a large group in industry uh, and we were able to get that team together for a couple of weeks on occasion uh, through very careful planning. Uh, and the. The experience that they gained in one week was worth three to four months of virtual activity easily. Um, and it's the same for these student conferences. You know, it's it's um, when you can we're looking at each other right now through a Zoom lens um, <laughs> and it's it's not the same as if I'm looking at, at you across the table. No, it's um, not. It's a it's a reasonable yeah. facsimile, but it's not the real thing. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and there's a, just a loss in that. You know, yeah. and, and people have gotten used to attending uh, conferences or meetings via this virtual environment, but they're not fully present in the meeting right? Uh, because there's other distractions or they might be working on other things on their computer, et cetera. Um, and so it really, you know, it, it just it it works when you have to make it work. Um, and in fact, I've been a big fan of it um, with IISE early in my volunteer days. We used GoToMeeting, uh, you know, like 15 years ago. Um, and it was a great way for me to connect with volunteers who we didn't travel together for meetings, but we were able to at least connect virtually. So it, it definitely has a place and a, and a value add. But the, the experience of a student conference uh, being together and having those students go out to dinner together and see plant tours and visit locations, you know, brings tremendous value. Yeah, I think you're a hundred percent right. It's, it's funny, Michael, uh, Dr. Sandy Furter at Ohio state was talking about lifelong friends that she's made, you know, through IISE conferences. And so I think that's, that's even something that, um, maybe we undervalue is not just the professional piece of these events, but the opportunity to build personal relationships that last forever. <laughs> Well, you're exactly right, James. The, one of the questions I asked the students, so I was the keynote speaker in, in February this year at the o Oklahoma State event. And there were yeah. like 15 universities represented there. Um, and so after the event, 
I was just chatting with students and and going around. It was the last event of of the conference. I said, what'd you learn the most? What'd you like the most? And with almost without a doubt, all of them said the networking and the opportunity to meet students from other universities yes. start to gain relationships and understanding, you know, about what they do and what they're studying and where they're going to work after business and and really creating that connection, that lifelong connection. Yeah, I think that that is really exciting. Are there um, any any types of events at the North Central Regional Conference that you're excited about? Anything that they're doing unique that you're excited to see? I am. One, you know, it's 20 minutes away from the National Monuments and, and yes. the banquet is going to be there. Um, so that's truly exciting to go, you know, see Mount Rushmore and, and have that experience. Yeah, the, the theme of this year's conference for um, this group um, is uh, creativity and innovation. Oh, wow. um, and, you know, I love that that topic because that's what industrial engineers are all about. Um, you know, in the simplest form, we make things better, <laughs> whether it's a system, a process, whether it's healthcare, manufacturing. Um, it doesn't matter where there's a system or a process which everything is built around. We have the opportunity to evaluate that and find better ways to do it, reducing variance and reducing waste. Um, and in our conference this year, <laughs> um, I'm going to speak a little bit about my career, but I'm also going to walk the group through a, a workshop in continuous improvement. Oh, wow. And, you know, as an industrial engineer, this is part of your training. Um, <laughs> I also um, have the pleasure of having a lean Six Sigma black belt um, and have had the opportunity to experience um, a Kaizen event multiple with um, a leader who I worked for who learned Kaizen in Japan, Oh wow! Uh, really under the Toyota production system way. Um, and so I really, it really elevated my level of thinking about how to use continuous improvement. This was in 2011, 2012. And so for 10 years now, I've been applying that approach to all parts of the business, whether it's how you hire people, train people, you know, move product, any part of the business, you can approach it with a continuous improvement perspective, um, which is really solving a root cause uh, problem versus a symptom um, and defining a solution that is sustainable. Um, and that's what really drives the success of a true continuous improvement program. So I'm, I'm excited to bring a workshop to the group, to let them see things a little differently and how to use some tools that they're learning um, in a real application. That's really cool. I think they're going to really benefit from that. Um, you're right. You know, I think so much, particularly for undergrads, we learn all these tools, but we don't always learn how to put them together in a way <laughs> in the real world that really generates an immediate improvement. So those students are going to walk out of there with a skill set that's invaluable uh, that they can apply right away in their first job. <laughs> And so uh, that's going to give them a leg up over everybody who's who didn't have the opportunity to go to that workshop. Exactly. You know, and, and it's always exciting to see the excitement of the planning team yeah. um, and what they're creating and how you can help them. Um, you know, as I said earlier, I've been fortunate to attend many of these um, and the ones that, you know, are most impressive is where the students understand that this is their chance to lead an event and create something really unique and special for all the attendees. Um, I remember being in Canada uh, and the opening ceremony was like attending a soccer match uh, in Europe where um, every school came in singing their school song and holding oh, their wow. school flag and they would come into the room and chant and get on stage and, and the next group would come in. Um, I think the hotel even uh, asked us to keep it down just a little. Um, but you know it's um, a good conference when the hotel has to ask you to keep it down. <laughs> yeah, and it was when it was all good fun and excitement and just, you know, Mike Wolf, Raldo, uh, scratch that, start over. Like Ralph Waldo Emerson said, you know, nothing great happens without enthusiasm. Yes. Um, and when you bring enthusiasm to this event, you know, uh, magnificent things happen and the students really create a memory and experience that they'll they'll take away forever. That is well said. Well, speaking of of those kind of memories and experiences that lead to other <laughs> experiences, do you think that the regional conference is a kind of a good, um, good gateway drug into the annual conference for students? Is it, do they get a, get a taste of uh, what conferences are like and, and help them see the benefit of being with, you know, 1500 plus IEs at the annual conference? Yeah, I think they do. You know, I, I, 
I've been to many annual conferences as well uh, and largely participated by students every time. Yeah. And it's great to see that larger network, you know, seven, 800 students at a time attending these annual conferences. Um, and it's a similar experience only on a much larger basis. And, you know, the, the student conference is really all designed around the opportunity for you to do two things or two or three things, really. Um, one, it's, titled a paper competition. So students can actually write a paper and compete right. with each other. And there are judges that review that that paper competition and the winner gets to go to annual and compete uh, with all the other regions at the annual level. So that itself is very exciting. Uh, it's great to see what the students are working on and, and it's a real practice for them to put it into a technical paper for what interest, industry is gonna bring to them um, in the future. Uh, so that's a great experience. The networking and learning from industry leaders and other students is also the other benefits uh, to the conference. Um, and that <clears throat> generates the feeling at these regional conferences that you get at the annual conference uh, on a much larger scale. So I think it's a good it's a good lead into the annual conference. Um, and quite frankly, a lot of these uh, students have figured out <clears throat> how to use events like a regional conference to help um earn their money so that many students can go to the annual conference. Right. Um, and so they'll have, they'll open up um, sessions to industry people in the area to come for a fee. Um, and when they make a bit of a profit on it, they can put that money towards, you know, supporting their event uh, going to uh, the annual conference, which is great. That's a great point. So February 17th through the 18th, 2023 rapid city, South Dakota, IISE North Central Regional Conference hosted by the South Dakota Mines. So what else should people know, Michael? What, what, what haven't we told folks that they should know, whether you're a student or a professional, about uh, joining the North Central Regional Conference? Yeah, you know, I, it's been said many ways before, but once a person's mind is expanded by a new idea, it never regains its original shape. Mm. And that's the whole part about development. I tell people all the time, you can't give what you don't have. Right. And sometimes students think, oh, I only need to learn what I need to learn in the class. And then as soon as I graduate, I'm done learning. You know, I never <laughs> want to read another book, you know, and I and I'm like, you can do that for 24 hours. Uh, but then you've got to reset your mind and go right after learning again, because what separates people who are really successful in this business, especially industrial and systems engineers is the ones that are very intentional about their self-development. Um, and this student conference is exactly doing that <clears throat> for them. It's allowing them to expand their mind and see something different and develop themselves. And the way you add more value to the marketplace is by adding more value to yourself. Um, and <clears throat> I didn't really make this correlation early in my life. And so it's one of the things I talk to uh, students and leaders all the time about is making sure that you're very intentional about your own growth. And yeah. IISE offers many ways to do that. The student region conference is one. And so I intend to bring all the value that I can uh, to this group of people so that they can walk away um, improved and thinking differently and, and really maybe start a transformational path in their own life and career uh, that may, they may not have otherwise thought of uh, until we had this experience. That's awesome. Well, Michael Foss, I am super excited about your workshop at the North Central Regional Conference. I know that everybody listening is excited as well. And I hope uh, anybody that is in that part of the country joins us February 17th and 18th. Uh, whether you're a student or a professional, there's a lot to learn and a lot of networking. Great opportunity to meet other industrial and systems engineers, like-minded folks. So come on out and join us. Yeah, it's going to be super. I invite everyone to come. Thanks, James. Appreciate the time. You've been listening to Problem Solved, the IISE podcast, a production of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers in Norcross, Georgia. We hope you'll share this and other Problem Solved episodes with your friends and colleagues. Learn more about sponsorship and advertising opportunities, as well as how you can become a member of IISE by visiting podcast.iise.org.